Navigating the PCF console. In this video, we will demonstrate the differences between PCF, PWS, and PCF Dev, where PCF is Pivotal Cloud Foundry and PWS stands for Pivotal Web Services. We'll demonstrate signing up for Pivotal Web Services and navigating the console. We'll demonstrate where to find important documentation in the PCF console. We'll demonstrate creating your first org in space. We'll also explore the PCF marketplace. Pivotal Web Services is a fully managed version of Pivotal Cloud Foundry. It's available as a service. It's provided by Pivotal as a means to give developers and organizations a way to sort of test the waters of Cloud Foundry. So it offers the quickest and most seamless way to get started with developing for Pivotal Cloud Foundry. Pivotal Web Services has feature parity with Pivotal Cloud Foundry. It's subscription-based and it's based on the resources used. The rates are similar to something you'd find on Amazon Web Services. So you pay about three cents per gigabyte hour once you push up an app, and then you will pay for a subscription for marketplace services. Overall, I would expect the prices of these demos to come out to be less than the cost of this video, most likely just a few dollars. Pivotal Web Services, it, again, it has feature parity with PCF and it is fully managed. So we won't have access to the administrator console, but we will have org admin privileges. And this is actually more than what most, this is more privileges than what most developers will get. Pivotal Cloud Foundry is a self-installed version of Cloud Foundry. Now, most organizations, they will choose the Pivotal Cloud Foundry self-install option. This is where they'll install Pivotal Cloud Foundry onto their private data center, and they'll also install it onto their public cloud, whether it be a dedicated, in a dedicated environment, or in a VPC. PCF licenses are very costly, costing tens of thousands of dollars. So they're out of hands of most developers and they're even pivotal cloud powered new licenses are there are even out of hands of small to mid-sized organizations. Their target is really large organizations. And the cool thing about Pivotal Cloud Foundry, it acts as an, as an, as an abstraction layer on top of infrastructure as a service providers. So the cool thing about Cloud Foundry is you can install it on, on your private data center where vSphere is installed, or you can install it on your public cloud infrastructure, whether it be Google, Amazon, or Microsoft Azure, and you develop your applications to Cloud Foundry. So now your applications become portable from one public service, from one public cloud to another and to a private cloud. So there is a lot of portability here with your applications with Pivotal Cloud Foundry, and that's one of the strong points. So rather than writing your applications and embedding code from Amazon Web Services or embedding the Azure SDK or Google Cloud SDK, using Cloud Foundry SDKs in Spring Cloud Native Libraries to help speed up development and to help portability. So now let's go ahead and visit the Pivotal Web Services console. So here we are in the Pivotal Web Services console. And as you can see, I've already created my account and I'm just gonna go ahead and log in. As you can see, the first thing we see is this, is this console. And we'll go ahead and, and let's go ahead and create our first org. So we'll click on this dropdown underneath org and we'll click create a new org. And you can name your org whatever you like. But to, to give you an idea of what an org is sort of supposed to be, is when you go to an org, let's look at a big financial organization like um, let's say Bank of America. And in there, they may provide insurance. You know, they have their insurance organization within Bank of America. They have capital markets and banking. They have different sectors within this bank. And each one might be able to, you can think of each one as sort of an org. And so we could call this, for instance, the insurance org. And we can go, go ahead and click create org, but I'm not going to do that for now. I already have my org created. So I will go down to my packet demo org. And so inside this org, you'll have what's called spaces. And these spaces typically reflect what an organization within an institution would want. So these are like our development environments, our software development pipeline, if you will. So, we, so as you can see, I have this development space, I have a QA space, and the next thing I only need to add is this produ production space. So I'll go ahead and add a production space. And so we have development, QA, and prod within our insurance organization, I mean, within the insurance org. So this is the sort of, what, what, I guess what you could call 
the, top the topology or the, the deployment pattern for PCF. Sometimes, if you're a PCF architect, what you may have to do is go into an organization and help divide the organization into orgs and spaces and give them a plan for what this topology is going to look like, for what this deployment architecture will look like. So it's good to understand what orgs and spaces, what the limitations with orgs and spaces are, which we'll get into in more in depth in the PCF architecture video coming up soon. So we created an org, we created a space, we learned a little bit about, about what an org and a space is. So let's go ahead and go to the marketplace. So the marketplace is a place where we can shop for fully managed services, like a fully managed MySQL database or a fully managed RabbitMQ message hub. There's quite a few services. We'll be using about four of these services. We'll be using service registry. We'll be using MySQL. We'll be using RabbitMQ, the circuit breaker, the app autoscaler, and the config server. So we'll really, and those are some of the really core supporting services needed for a, to support an enterprise architecture. Now, the other cool thing here that I want to show you is the Cloud Foundry docs. These are important. Definitely bookmark this. Good place to get some documentation. There's support. There's tools. Now, the tools button, if you click on this, it'll give you a nice um, piece of code here to copy and paste into your terminal. If you ever forget how to log in, simply go to the tools, open up your terminal, copy and paste this in there, and they'll help you log in and even help you push your app. And there's blog and status. The status will simply show you the health status of this PCF foundation and it's healthy. So let's go ahead and revisit one last, for one last, one last second here, orgs and spaces. So compute resource, this is sort of a way to organize your compute, your compute resources. So in development, we have our, as you can see, it's blank. We have not pushed any apps yet, but this is where our, all of our applications would show up. So let's say you're within a bank and within the bank, you have insurance and within insurance, you're having maybe a hundred different microservices and they would appear here. However, you know, there is a limit to how many, so there's something called a quota where you can only have so many compute resources in each space. And so this is, I guess you could think of this orgs and spaces, it's a scheme for which to logically organize your compute resources, your applications, et cetera. And if you look into spaces, you'll see that you can bind services to spaces these services are marketplace services. So again, if you click on add a service, it's going to take us to the marketplace. And these cert whenever you create a new service, it's bound to your space. So when you create a MySQL instance in your development space, then applications in your QA and prod spaces cannot access your MySQL instance that's in your development space. It cannot, it cannot access the MySQL service that's in your development space. And this is sort of cool because now you have infrastructure needed for dev QA and prod. And, you know, typically speaking, you don't want to use production data in development or, or, or prod. You don't want to be accessing your production database from a development or, or QA environment for good reasons. So that's a little bit about services. And, and again, when you create a new marketplace service, you're bonding it to a space and only apps in that space can talk to that service for security reasons. Now there's roots, which we'll get into later. There's also members. So your organization is going to have lots of developers and you want to add a developer to a space and they can have different permissions as you see space manager, space developer, space auditor. We'll talk more in depth about these permissions later, but if you ever want to see who has access to see your apps in your space, you can always go to the members tab. Lastly, we did not yet cover PCF dev. PCF dev is a self-contained PCF installation that lets developers run a full-fledged PCF installation on their laptops and computers. And it's used for demonstration and for development purposes. So it's a little bit more effort to get started with PCF dev, but when you decide to install PCF dev, you're essentially installing an entire Pivotal Cloud Foundry foundation on your laptop or your desktop computer. And it's a local installation of PCF for developers and as well um, for demonstration purposes. And you can essentially try to mirror your organization's PCF environment. So that way, when you're developing code on your laptop, and then you want to push it up, the, you can test it on your local first, and then push it up to Cloud Foundry, and it should work fine. That's the idea behind having PCF dev developer laptop. It's a very lightweight install. And you know, PCF comes up with about, it's made of about 15 or 20 different applications. And so 
Normally, PCF installation uses a lot of resources, so this is a very slimmed down version of PCF with only the minimal resources that that's needed to run PCF, but still the quickest option is Pivotal Web Services, which is what we'll be going more in depth in. To recap, we signed up for Pivotal Web Services and logged in. We created an org and our space. We learned a little bit about the marketplace services and the relation to, to spaces within an org. We learned a little, bit about, a little bit about the topology of orgs and spaces and how an organization might choose to create orgs and spaces. We located some key support features within PCF, and we identified what Pivotal Web Services is, PCF Dev, and PCF Self-Install. In the next video, we'll use the command line interface to interact with PCF.